This is the Etches Collection, a new paleontology museum in the Kimmeridge in Dorset. I saw about this in the TV, so I thought that, okay, let's go and see it, it's new. This is the first week that Etches Museum is opened. And, and even this first week, it has a lot of visitors. We just arrived 10 o'clock when the museum opens. It's now 11.05. And a lot of people already have been here, from foreign countries even. That's interesting. So... And I saw Steve actually with such a love and care. He cleaned the floor tile. He saw a little patch in it. He cleans it. He has such a strong feeling for this place. As his life achievement, you know. And he said to me that he had a lot of papers published and a lot more in the publication. And this is uh, Steve. So if you don't, just carry on, all right? So if we start here, um, if you're very clever, and I suppose some of you are, they probably noticed that actually they've got the text wrong because a femur is this bone here in your leg, okay? And if you look at that arrow, it's pointing to the humerus of your arm. Mm. And that's wrong, but we've, it's just that the person who did the graphics got it all wrong. So, okay. so these, all I can say is these are very large protodes. They're, they're parts of the femur, parts of the humerus, the plesiosaurs and pliosaurs. Now pliosaurs are exactly the same as a plesiosaur, and if you know a plesiosaur, it's like a Loch Ness monster with a long neck and a long tail. And the pliosaurs were the same family, but they had very short necks and very large skulls. And these things grew to about 20 odd meters, and they were the top of the food chain. So they were the, they anything and everything, all right? And we can demonstrate that when we get around the corner over there, okay? Because we find masses and masses and masses of predation. And even when you look at that, that limb bone there, you'll see it's quite well lit. You'll see some dents and holes in it, and they're puncture marks where the, something's actually grabbed hold of it and ripped it apart. But it never ate that bit, because when these parcels ate, flesh, they also ate bone. They didn't chew their food, they just ripped it apart, like crocodiles swallowed it, and the digestion juices dissolved the bone as well, so they took anything and everything, okay? Um, we've wasted a bit of space here, but I don't know if you know what coelacanths are. Does everyone know? Oh, good. Yeah? yeah? Well, there's a, there's a lady, I uh, forget the first name, but Latimer her name was, in the 1930s, she was, because everyone thought coelacanths were extinct, Okay. And in the 1930s, there was a lady at a fish market in South Africa saw this a coelacanth for sale. She thought, oh my God, 
this is a, you know, this is the first one we've ever seen. So she had to get it back to the museum before, because in those days refrigeration was, you know, no refrigeration. She got it back to the, um, the museum, and it, of course it hit the world press. Everyone wanted a coelacanth. And it nearly caused about their extinction then, because everyone was longlining for coelacanth to put in their museum, you know? But anyhow, they're a sort of fish that they thought was a transitional species, i.e. a fish that its limbs were developing like legs, or its fins were developing like legs or limbs, you know? And it was a, like a fish that was actually about to crawl out of the sea and go on land to carry out its next stage of life. But it never did. And if you've ever seen the films on coelacanths, they sort of, they go upside down and they use their sort of fins as limbs, but they've, they've never gone, they've never come out of the sort of water, as one might say, and they're still living in two groups uh, today. And this is just, we've just put the bones back, that's what I've got of it, of a really large ceiling cap, okay? There's one, it's just a small skull of another one, okay? But they're quite rare in the fossil record here at Kimridge, okay? Because some of the fish you see here, the reason we've got the money to actually build this is actually, we're lucky because it's staying in Dorset. It, it actually, it, most of the stuff is completely new to science. And when we went for funding for this, we went, approached the Naturistic Museum and said, could we get a le letter of backing for this collection to be housed here? And they came back, one of the guys, and said, um, we reckon we've got the best fish collection in the world, but the material that you've got in the collection is supersedes ours by far. And that's the same now with the reptiles we've got. In the pterosaur material and everything else. So this is the reason in, in that the, the importance of the collection is actually gain this money and it's staying here in Dorset where it should stay. You shouldn't have to go to London to see Dorset specimens. Okay? We have to carry on. Right. Um, you may not look, but you're looking down the throat of the shark there. Okay? So if you look around the periphery, you'll see all the sort of teeth. And the interesting thing is on the left-hand side, you can see a funny little plate with like a barbed hook on it. And if you look down the side there, another bigger one and they're there, they hang over the heads of the male sharks they're there for a display or something or but they don't they don't occur on sort of females okay so and they're very rare in the fossil record because sharks you may or may not know their bodies are made of cartilage and cartilage does not readily fossilize you know fish are made of bone bone preserves better than cartilage okay so any shark like we normally find lots and lots of teeth because they're made of ganoid and we find the thin spine, but the body parts are really rare in the fossil record. So that's the first semi 3D skull of the hibernate shark we've got. Um, ichthyosaurs, again, and if you go to Lyme Regis, if you really wanted to find an ichthyosaur, Lyme Regis would be the best place in Britain to find one. They're two a penny. I know that they're all that common, but anyhow, they're very common. A friend of mine claimed his three specimens in a year once. Okay. But in the Kimmage clay, they're really rare. We find lots and lots of individual bones of ichthyosaurs. But to find something like this is really rare. And this is from a, and if you say it was in a white stone, actually, mm -hmm. it's still from the Kimmage clay. It's from a cockless limestone band. But if you go down the bay and walk for two miles, you'll see the cockless limestone band in the Kimmage clay there. And so we found a, the front quarters of an ichthyosaur, but it's, it's actually really interesting because again it's completely new to science and you ask why how do I know it's completely new to science you look along its teeth they're really small and sharp okay and when you study this no linear lines up the tooth crown so in other words it's a it's a specialist feeder and it's unlike any other other ethical we found up to date it's also got a big eye and of course so you think well it must be feeding on something special because it's the teeth are not robust enough to feed on these big heavily scale fish okay so we think that it's feeding on squid. Now squid during the day go down deep and they hide in the sort of darkness of there and they come up at night to feed. Well, if you've got a big eye, you can actually dive down and still see. All right, so they can catch their, their prey down there where they're hiding, okay? So this is a specialist feeder and it's got some funny looking cartilage along the tops of the earth. I'm not gonna bore you too much. It's a bit of that, did you find that? Sorry? Do you, you want to know the story? Yeah. That, yeah. Right, that middle, you can see the middle there I've joined. And I found that about three or four years prior to finding that. Now, what you, what you must realise is you don't see it like this. No, if you, you could imagine a block of limestone that high, okay, bit, okay, and then you see the cross section of those bones. You can see a line of bones, okay. So then you've got to thin the block down, which we do with a hammer chisel. We don't use those fossil hammers that, you know, we use a big hammer and some big chisels. And, and they're sharpened in a way, like razor sharp, they actually go into the limestone, split it, 
and delaminated it. And anyhow, when I cleaned it, you couldn't see all that, when I cleaned it, a friend said, well, find the rest of it, it must be there. I said, it's not there. I've looked, I've looked. About three or four years later, I knelt down to look at them, and I could see another line of bones on another block. So when I, I split this big block, and it was so big that I had to use like levers. In other words, it was so heavy, I couldn't lift the slabs I split off. So I had to use another chisel, lever it up, slice some pebbles in, my dear kids, this is, and then you could just kick it off your foot it just rolls on the pebbles and then split the next bit because you can only have to get down to the bottom of it and then when I split it off it came out in two blocks you couldn't see any of this by the way it came out in two blocks so it was so heavy I separated it in my rucksack it was a hundred litre rucksack with my jumper and when I got back home I, after I recovered of course because it takes a while seriously I'm not joking you know I opened the rucksack up and found oh no the jumper had gone and so the other one of the slabs and then I realized on the tip of the snag, there was a block missing there, and I thought, oh no, it, it didn't cross section, you couldn't see the teeth, so it didn't look like a snag. So I had the day off the next day, and because I worked for myself, so that's right. And I went back, the jumper had washed away, but right where I picked the rugs up, that slab was there, so I thought, oh great. So then I had to go through about three or four hundred weight of rubble to try and find the bit that was missing. And when I found that, I tipped it up, and I could see the tip of the snag. I thought, oh, my God, I've got it. So then it was a case of cleaning this thing, and it's beautifully preserved. You can see it's, it's virtually uncrushed. Okay, the skull's crushed down, but if you look on side view, it's not crushed down dead flat like this one over there. Um, so it, it's really, really nice. And since then, because this is flat the cliff, I found more of this. So I found part of the pelvis of it. So when we describe this new design, all those features will be built into that description. So it's really, so it's all cutting edge science, this is, you know, fossils, find new stuff, complete new designs, and you can spend 10 lifetimes here collecting this stuff and you'll find something new each time. Oh, can um, I ask a question? Sorry, yeah, it's about sharks. Sharks are carp, isn't it? They have, uh, they don't have very strong classified, but they do have very strong classified. Yes, they well, do. How, how would, is this, is this an, an evolutionary, is that something that evolved from an armoured clay or something right, like no, that? Well, how did that actually happen? Well, the teeth are actually, they're not made of carts of teeth, they're made of gamoid. Yeah. All right, and that's an enamel, okay? Which so they're enamel, and they're enamel. They got it's like your teeth. Dentin? It's like your teeth. Have your... they got dentin? Like the dentin um, as well? No, not as sharks, okay. no. Good lad. And you... Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I know that. <laughs> yeah, these aren't dinosaurs, but you're right. <laughs> Hang on, you jump up and tell him. Come on. <laughs> Good. Well done. <laughs> so, get back to this. Um, you, you see these goose barnacles, they get attached to like, things that float across from America, and they, they actually just hang off a bit of floating debris, just still feed through the water. And they're called goose barnacles, they've got a big long fleshy pedicle. Now, they're known in the Jurassic, there's no, no doubt about that, but when I found the complete one here, I just thought, oh, it's the same as everyone else has found, you know? So 25 years later, the long came professor and said, um, can I have a look at these barnacles? And he said, well, do you realise Charles Darwin's passion was barnacles? And that particular barnacle you've got is still living today in Japan. He said Darwin assumed he would find its ancestor back in the Jurassic. He said he never did, and you've got it. So you've got that missing link. But also, he said, he only found one, during his lifetime, he was an authority on barnacles, living out of fossil. He found one new fossil barnacle. He said, you've got five from the Kiris clay in your collection. And we've also got the world's oldest coloured barnacle, so you see a photograph of that. So that's quite interesting. Since then, I found a 2.8 metre long, covered with millions of them. All right, so it's only a two metre long jaw. I can assure you, they probably had a four metre skull. You know, they were big, they were huge. We, in the Natural History Museum, we've seen two sockets like that. And we've, we've measured some of their teeth, they're 16 inches long. And that's including the root. And the reason they're 16 inches long in the sense they're all relative. It's actually, they're anchored well into the jaws. So that gives them indication that they're, they've got a 
really fierce and powerful bite, and they can re resist torsional stresses where your teeth will come out if you did too much, you know, the roots would just pull out. But these are so deeply embedded that they can actually just rip anything apart. They're very, very strong. Okay? So if we get yeah, the slide. Yeah. Okay. So if we go to this, we, we go along to the thing. Right, the age of the rocks here, good question, 157 to 152 old. And the thickness of the rocks here that from that time is 530 metres thick. And as you walk east, the beds dip so you walk through time. So we can actually collect from the whole series. Okay. And here, okay, so we've got beetle be eaten. So this fish that predominantly feed on different things. So we've got fish that's like these, like these, like um, uh, tarpon. Okay, so in other words, they swam behind other fish and just suck them in. Not well with it, fish, that makes an army in the stomach. Okay? These, these are the big they've got these crushing teeth, they've been on like shellfish, they're like rat, rat, the all sorts of things. There's another one here that's got three rows of teeth, and this is an undescribed dentary or lower jaw than fish, and that's rather like an anchor fish that sat on the seafloor. It just, with the three rows of teeth, it just closed the jaw. Real powerful life. But all you've got to realise that some of these are completely new, so we've not yet been described. That one there looks very similar to, was it the Cat? Yeah, similar, yeah. Yeah, similar, yeah. 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 No, there's nothing in the stuff. Oh, right. No, no, we're no, good. But no, we'll see some of them in a minute. Right. Ammonite. Does everyone know what an ammonite is? What is it then? There's a mollusk. I thought that was coming. Squid. Squid and shell. Yeah. yeah, it's not a snail, it's a squid and shell. And it had a hibernate, it sucked water and it jetted itself along. There are, so a squid and a shell is an excellent food source of something. And what we found, because this is this sea's about 200 meters deep, so anything that hits the sea floor is unaffected by currents or storms or anything like that. What I found is hundreds of these ammonites with big chunks missing. So when you put the ammonites together, you, you see the chunks are always in the same place. Out. And it's the back of the body chamber. So the soft tissue in the, the squid is anchored to the back of the body chamber. Now, if you can actually break that attachment, you can take the whole tissue out. Mm -hmm. So something's perfected the techniques of doing that. And originally we thought it was fish, like these big thicker knots, but actually, I don't think that's the case now. They're not clever enough to do that, I don't think. But what we've got are cuttlefish. And if you've ever seen cuttlefish octopus, they're really good, and very skilled sort of getting over problems. All they do is grasp the tentacles, position them, they've got a parrot like beak, break the shell open, take the fish out, done. Alright? Okay, so that's the first predation you see on that one. But the Kimish clay, being, like I said before, the least interesting the British fossil collector, all of a sudden we're finding complete new information from this overlooked formation. Okay, so we've got, this is an ichthyosaur. You've seen it on the front cover of our brochure, but basically it's the most complete Kimberidian ichthyosaur you'll see. Go to the Natural History Museum and say, can I see any of your Kimberidian ichthyosaur? They've got nothing, except for one splat specimen, which is not really good. But this one, if you notice, the thing about ichthyosaur, it's got a really large head and a small body. The tail's missing, by the way. Okay. And that indicates it's a juvenile. <coughs> and then if you look under the ribs, it's just full of food. It's full of fish, and it's full of squid. And the squid have got these... Funny hooks on the tentacles to put this sort of frame, and they mean up to feed on small fish. And there's a, a bone there which is it's raised in relief, so it's a resistant compaction. Don't forget this is squashed down now. Right? All the pressure of the overburden is just squashed this down flat. And what we do when we find these animals is we actually we turn them upside down and stretch them. Because when it goes down to the mud, before it gets covered up, it starts to decay. So the bit that sticks down in the mud is the best bit of prep. So we always turn it up the other way and prep it. That includes fish as well. So that's a really interesting one. You can see if you look close, it's got blood teeth. So it's feeding on quite hard scale prey. Not like that if we saw we just seen over there with extremely sharp teeth. Okay. Now we get on to the mega predators now. So ichthyosaurs are an excellent food source for bigger animals. And what we found is evidence of predation. So if you look there, there's a lower jaw of an ichthyosaur like this. One half is missing, there's a big bite must have a crack on that. This slab here is the remains of about 16 foot thickness. And if you look at all the bones, they're all broken. 
And the collection here is you look at the pattern, there's a cotton, or the top third one down, there's a line across, and you see shards of bone all held there, where a tooth has actually just gone into the bone and shard an ankle, flex a bone off of the figure. But because it's still covered in carpet of flesh, they've remained. Staring might be precious again from the other side. Um, so we can't say with any authority what the predator was. It would only be a fossil or a crocodile. You see the big long roots, you can see the black and amber crown. Okay? And so they deal very efficiently with anything like this. And think about you know being 18, 20, 16 foot if this was no problem at all. The interesting one is this one. Have you ever seen on YouTube there's me cutting this thing out? And when I found it, it looked like it was preserved upside down. So when I prepped it the other way up, it was preserved extensively. But if you look across the back of the bone, they're all broken. And there's shards of bone hanging there. Fish had just had his head bitten off. Oh, and that's just gone down on the sea floor. There was no more of it. Once you dug it out, you expect the whole skeleton. No, it's gone. And that was just the remains of it. Right. Proof, that's, I'm not telling you this. There's another proposal, that's part of the Lego of a juvenile dinosaur, and you've got a line of three bite marks across there, and the leading lines on the two frame are actually pressing those bite marks, and another surprise will be in the small Another leg bone there for a two frame of for a proof, and it is all over there with two teeth, that's a cracked bone in half, so two of those teeth are cracked in half. So we've got masses and masses and masses of things. And this one, the interesting, it doesn't have to do with predation, but there's a new species of crocodile there. Does anyone know where its eyes were? In the swamp. What's the question? No. Actually, there are no slits there. Okay, but the interesting, this one, 